In order to describe electric circuits, we have to have some vocabulary to describe how electricity is passing through them. I want to build a simple circuit, and then we'll use how it behaves to define a couple terms. Voltage or electric potential, which is the energy each coulomb of charge going through has. And electric current, which is the speed of charges as they go through a circuit. So here's the components uh, we're going to use to make our circuit. And we're going to wire them using alligator clips and wires. So we'll go in order. Um, we're going to start on the positive side of the battery. Usually red is what we use to code for positive. You're going to see this makes a rat's nest of wires, so having color codes is super important. We're then going to hook that to one side of the bulb. I'm using two bulbs here because this battery has enough uh, voltage it would burn out just one. And then I'm going to hook another lead to the other side of the bulb. I'll hook this to our switch. And then I'll hook our switch back to the negative side of the battery. So we can see that flipping the switch turns on the bulbs. This is the circuit we're going to use to investigate how you measure both voltage using our voltmeter and current using our ammeter. As we watch electricity travel through a circuit, we need to focus on what charges are doing. In the metal circuits we're going to look at first, charges are moving in the form of electrons. And an electron actually has a very small charge compared to the unit we use for charge, which is the Coulomb. One electron only has 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. Really small amount. If you do a unit conversion, that tells you that when a coulomb of charge goes through a circuit, it's this many electrons. You can study this in greater detail. I'll have the picture posted. But it's a huge amount. We try to figure out how much energy each of those coulombs of charge, each of this many electrons traveling through, carries. And that's what the volt is. You get this many electrons, it's carrying one joule of charge, that means it's one volt. So electric potential or voltage is a measure of how much energy each coulomb of charge going through the circuit has. You have more of these, it's going to carry more energy. You have less of these, it's going to carry less energy. What's this energy going to cause? It's going to cause charges to move. And the movement of charges, the speed of those charges, is called the electric current. Just like the, the speed we learned at first was how fast we covered distance, our meters per second, and then we learned about power, the speed of energy, it's our energy per second. The speed of charge is our charge per second. It's called electric current, has the symbol I, and although its unit is really the Coulomb per second, it gets abbreviated ampere, or A. So this will be a measure of how fast charges are going through a circuit. Because the battery is the thing giving the energy to each coulomb of charge, we're actually interested in the difference across the battery. We can imagine that charges are being picked up and pushed from one end of the battery to the other, and during that time, work's being done on them. They're being given energy. So we're interested in the difference between how much energy a charge has on one side of the battery and how much it has on the other. Therefore, we measure voltage across a battery. So as we said, I'm going to wire the voltmeter across the battery. So it's just going to be on one side of the battery and the other. Voltmeters, unlike light bulbs, are very important that you, you get the order right. So I'm going to hook up the side that says negative to the negative side of the battery. And 
and I'll hook up the side that says positive to the positive side. So we can see that the, uh, the meter goes up. It's reading about 7 volts. And if I turn it off, we get roughly the same voltage. It does increase a little bit. This is due to something called the battery's internal resistance that makes the battery appear rest less strong when there's current flowing through it. You'll learn about that in some of the classes. But the bottom line is because we're checking the battery's ability to push charges, it's not super important whether charges are actually being pushed. This is a product of the fact that we measure voltage across a circuit. Let's check current now and see if that is any different. Current is how fast charges are moving. If you were trying to figure out how fast a river was moving, maybe you could stick your hand in and feel the water go through your fingers. Or more accurately, you could stick a water wheel in and count the number of rotations and get some idea of how fast the water was traveling. But the point is you had to measure it in the circuit. You couldn't just go across like we did for voltage. You actually had to stick the meter in. So we'll actually break the circuit, wire the meter, and then wire the rest of the circuit to the meter. So in order to measure current, we have to put the meter in the circuit. So what I'm going to do to accomplish this, I'm going to disconnect the positive power supply from the bulbs. And I'm going to hook it up to the positive place on our amp meter. I'm then going to go from the negative terminal in the amp meter back to where I should have been hooked up. And the circuit relights and we can see that now we have a current. What makes this very different than voltage though is if I open the switch, not only do the bulbs go off, but the current goes to zero as well. Current is measured in the circuit. There's electricity flowing through this meter for it to work. So if there's no electricity flowing, the reading for current is zero. So if we zoom in, we can see the needles on the second major division. If we go by the top scale, which I hooked it up to, between 0 and 0.25. So that means each major division is 0.05. And this meter is currently telling us that we have 0.1 amps, 0.1 coulombs per second. So what we're going to do next is we're going to see how uh, how many coulombs and how many electrons that represents over a certain time period. Let's count off about 10 seconds. So I'll say go and then stop. And we'll, we'll watch these beautiful bulbs in their light and we'll think about how many coulombs and electrons the light over this period represents. So go. Stop. Let's try to figure that out. Remember, in each second, we got 0.1 coulombs. So in that 10 seconds we spent watching the light bulbs, I wanted to figure out how many coulombs of charge uh, flowed through the circuit and what that represented in terms of numbers of electrons. So our ammeter told us we had 0.1 amps which is the same as 0.1 coulombs per second. And since we waited 10 seconds, that means we got a coulomb of charge. So what does that mean in terms of the number of electrons? Well, since we know the charge on an electron, we can divide a coulomb by that, and that gives us 6.25 times 10 to the 18th electrons, which out of scientific notation is that number. And I just think that's really cool to look at. I just think that for something as simple as lighting up a bulb, 
that many particles are doing our bidding for us. It just gives us some perspective on all the, the modern miracles we have of technology and science. We're harnessing so many small particles in order for something to happen. And it's important to appreciate that and be amazed by that, I think. Did one other calculation to try to put uh, the amount of energy we used in those 10 seconds in perspective. I recognize this is a 9 volt battery, which means each coulomb got 9 joules. Since we had one coulomb, we got 9 joules total. And I thought we would take a look at that in terms of potential energy. How high would I have to lift this 100 gram mass in order to get 9 joules? And it turns out not very high, 0.92 centimeters. So I'm going to do the work on this mass uh, required to light the bulb for those 10 seconds. And I'll take 10 seconds to do it, so I'll be uh, outputting power at the same rate that our little battery here was. All right, so my battery's running. Uh, you can see the light bulbs lit up, and it is outputting uh, nine joules every 10 seconds. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to give this little weight nine joules of potential energy, and I'll take exactly the same time, 10 seconds. So we'll both be giving it the same energy with the same power. So we're both, I guess, uh, 0.9 watts. So here we go. Starting now. There we go. That's point that's 9 joules and 10 seconds for both me and the battery.